بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد It's imperative for us to practice the fara'id of Islam the basic pillars of Islam as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to us in the Hadith of Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasalam When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about Islam He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Al-Islam in Tashhada in La Ilaha Illallah Wa in Muhammad Rasulullah Wa Tukimu Salah Wa Tutiyu Zakat وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت إن استطاط إليه سبيل. and so in that hadith the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم clarified for us the pillars of Islam and that those those pillars as a pillar holds up a building they make up the foundation of Islam for us that's that's our our root that's the usul that the people always commonly refer to the usul the usul is the foundation those principles. Those kawaid, those pillars in which your religion stands upon. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, of course, the shahada and praying five times a day the salat, paying the zakat, fasting the holy month of Ramadan, and making hajj if a person is able to do so. And the Prophet ﷺ also warned us countless times to be cautious about using our tongues in a misguided fashion. How do we use our tongues in misguided fashion? One of the ways is by spreading bid'ah, innovation in the religion, spreading shirk, kufr, ma'asi, and dhunub, sinfulness. Uh, spreading tales and lies about other individuals, trampling on the honor of one another with our tongue by ghiba and namiba, by backbiting and slander. All of these are ways in which we misuse our tongue and the Prophet ﷺ warned us about it. The Prophet ﷺ in a hadith that contained all of that, a very beautiful hadith, the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and we'll read it and try to abstract some of the fawaid that the scholars mention. An Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal qa'a qultu, Ya Rasulullah, akhbirni bi amalin yulkhilani al-jannah. So Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, O Messenger of Allah, show me actions which will help me to enter jannah. To enter paradise. And that will make me be away from the hellfire. You know, that will prevent me from entering the hellfire. La tushriku bihi shayin. So the Prophet ﷺ began his beautiful, ashmal, akmal advice. Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. He said, You've asked about something that's alim, that's great. And verily, it's easy on for the person who Allah has made it easy for. Allah the Almighty has made it easy for. He said, the first part of this advice, he said, worship Allah and do not associate any partners with him. Absolutely not, no shirk. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam should not be worshipped with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jesus wasallam should not be worshipped with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim wasallam should not be worshipped with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nor the mother of Jesus, nor anyone, nor anything with Allah wa ta'ala. Worship him alone. Ta'budullah wa la tushriku bi shayin. Then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned what to salat and establish the prayer. What to tia zakat and pay the zakat, pay pay the alms tax. What to 
Sama Ramadan and fast the holy month of Ramadan. With the Hujjul Bayt, as we mentioned in the Hadith of Jibreel, and making the sacred pilgrimage to Mecca. And that is the only place you can make this sacred pilgrimage to. Thumaqa, then he said, Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu Ali, Ala udillaka, Ala abwab al khair. Shouldn't I show you the, the different uh, doors of goodness, of righteousness? Asum a jannah. Fasting is a shield. Wasadakatu tutfi'u khatiyata kama yutfi'u al ma'u al nar. Then the Prophet وسلم, after mentioning that sadaqa is a shield, fasting is a shield, uh, fasting is a shield, som a jannah. And then he said, sadaqa or charity, it extinguishes the sins similar to the way water extinguishes the fire. Wasalatu rajali fi jof al And the prayer of a man making his prayer in the depths of the night. In the darkest, darkest depths of the night. That this extinguishes our sins. So that's an admonition to myself first and foremost. And to you, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Try to pray in the night prayer. Try to delay your witr if you can. Try and strive and try to be regular. Even if it's one rakah that you get up for three rakah. You get up and you pray two rakat for the tahajid and one for the witr. Try your best, bi'idhnillah, and I'm going to try my best starting with this night, bi'idhnillah, as I'm sharing this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it's there to practice. Thumma tala, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read the ayat where Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, Tatajafa junubuhum an anil madajiri. That they, 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 in their in their rooms, they uh, it's it's it, it refers to that Allah that the believers they leave their beds in the depths of the night. They forsake their beds and pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Hatta balaga yamalun until the ver, to the portion of the verse where Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says that they do this yamalun. Thumakala, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ala Ukhbiruka Biras al Amr Wa Umudihi wa Dharwati Sinamihi. Kultu Bella Ya Rasulullah Kala Rasul Amr al Islamu Wa Umuduhu Salatu Wa Dharwatu Sinamihi al Jihad. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Should I tell you about the peak of the matter? The head of the matter? And its foundation? And the highest point, they said, he said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The head of the matter is Islam, and its pillar is Salat, and the highest point is Jihad, Visa Bilillah. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Ukhbiruka bi Malik. Shouldn't I tell you what controls all of that? Or what is what controls all of that? Kultu bela ya Rasulullah. Then Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then responded, he grabbed his tongue. Fa'akhda bi lisani. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded first by body language, by grabbing his tongue. And the, then him, then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَقَالْ كُفُّ عَلَيْكَ هَذَا He said, restrain this, meaning restrain the tongue. قُلْتُ يَا بَانِ يَا نَبِيَ اللَّهِ وَإِنَّ لِمُؤَخِذُونَ بِمَا نَتَكَلَّمُ بِي He said, O Messenger of Allah, O Prophet of Allah, are we going to be held accountable for those things which we said? Faqal, then the Prophet Sallallahu said, Thaqilatka ummaka 
The Prophet ﷺ responded, Of course. Is there a thing that causes the people to be in the hellfire more than that? Letting us know that backbiting, talking and li lying, harming one another's honor, speaking ill of one another, that that is one of the major sins that can harm us and that can take us to the hellfire. It's also one of the ways in which we can be punished in the grave. As the Prophet ﷺ said in another authentic hadith, where he said, after walking by some graves, that the Jew, there were two Jews being punished in the graves. And he, he said that He said, as for the first one, he used to not uh, protect himself when he was urinating, meaning to protect his clothes from getting urination splashing upon his clothes, on his garments, or it, the ulama explained that it also could mean that he did not uh, purify himself properly, the proper istinja with water. You know, he did. they didn't make istinja or clean themselves when they went to the restroom. And then he mentioned, As for the second one, the second one who has done this major sin that will get them to be punished, cause them to be punished in the grave, they used to carry the tales of people, meaning that they used to hear information and spread it around the community with the intention to sp spread evil. That's what namima is, as is defined by the ulama and is defined by the, the Prophet sallallahu And there's countless benefits from the hadith at hand that we were mentioning. Some of them we'll just mention very briefly. This hadith illustrates for us the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, how they were, uh, they loved goodness, they loved righteousness, and that they were, they always wanted to know and ask the Prophet وسلم, about what would enter them into paradise, and what would cause them to be in the hellfire, and how to stay away from it. Also, this hadith illustrates for us the benefit and the greatness of Mu'ad ibn Jabal This hadith also shows us the various ways to get to paradise, as was mentioned in the hadith, that of course jihad fi sabilillah is there, praying, the, uh, praying salat, paying the zakat, paying the alms tax, giving charity, uh, praying the night prayer, all of these things, doing the fara'id, of course making hajj and umrah, and fasting the holy month of Ramadan, all of these are ways of khair. Some of them are wajib obligations, and some of them are mustahab, some of them are things in which are uh, beneficial, that we will be rewarded for if we do. Also, this hadith illustrates for us the importance of the pillars of Islam, the pillars and, and the arkan of salat. This hadith also shows us the importance of practicing Islam, not just listening to lectures and not just uh, teaching, but practicing what you preach, practicing what you hear. This hadith also illustrates for us the that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for us to do righteous deeds if we strive to do them. Also, this hadith uh, illustrates the importance of doing righteous deeds and making supplication to Allah the Almighty alone. And this hadith also shows us and encourages us to strive to do the various uh, various different ways of khair, those various different ways of doing righteous deeds. This hadith also shows, shows us that fasting protects us in this life and it protects us from sinfulness. So the more we fast, the less time we have even to do sins. The more we fast, even fasting it physically, it drains you to where you, it makes it more difficult for a person to do certain sins. And not only does it take their time, but it takes their energy. And if you're fasting properly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it should be increasing your taqwa, your God fearfulness, to keep you away from those sins and ma'asi. Many benefits of fasting. Another benefit of this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that fasting is one of the most severe deeds upon the shaitan. Allahu Akbar. So we all are in need of making war upon the devil. And that is the best way to do it, by fasting. By fasting, of course, after Tawheed, after Tawheed Allah, and correcting your Aqidah, you know, it's fasting. Also, this hadith shows us the importance of spending in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and charity for the, for the poor and those who are in need. This hadith also illustrates us, illustrates for us that charity expiates our sins. 
this hadith also shows us the uh, importance of, of guarding our tongues, being cautious about what we say and how we speak about others and so forth. This hadith also shows us that's an obligation to pr protect and preserve our tongues and not to speak ill of one another. And from the point of uh, an, an, an additional benefit with regards to that, that doesn't mean in Islam that we never speak about individuals. Absolutely not. So we have to have that understanding that it is mishrul and it is actually a person who will receive ajr if they are refuting Ahl bidah and they have the right to do so, meaning it's a person of knowledge, a student of knowledge, or that's grounded, and uh, or the ulama, that it is an obligation upon them, if they have the ability to do so, to speak about the people of innovation and desires who want to change the religion of Islam, who want to distort the religion of Islam, who want to belittle the religion of Islam. That that is an obligation and a type of jihad, that's a type of, stri of striving, that a person will receive immense reward, and those imams like Imam Ahmed and Ahl Hadith, for their, their great uh, striving in this, this uh, in this fashion, will be rewarded, and may Allah bless them all with Jannah to produce, and bless us to follow their minhaj and their methodology, ameen, ya rabbil alameen. So it's imperative for us to understand, not to go to any other extreme, to the extreme that it's never permissible to speak about somebody, but there must be a maslaha sharia, meaning there must be a, a sharia benefit, meaning you're protecting the religion from the harm of this individual, or protecting the Muslims from the harm of this individual, or as a way of punishing this individual for their deviation, or, or to stay away from their harm for yourself, or that you are speaking uh, about this individual because maybe a particular sister wants to marry an individual and they need to know about this individual. This, this individual has been married 35 times, so you, that you must, that's an obligation to tell the sister so that way she knows what she's getting into. Well, this individual is known for lying. This individual is known for chatting with, with the opposite sex. This individual is known for zina. For, for adultery or, or fornication or, or pornography or whatever, all of these things. That, in that sense, if you have knowledge about that and a sister is inquiring about this individual wants to marry, then in that situation you would, you would share that person's sins with that sister so that she is aware, or with her wali, so that she, he is aware of what that sister might be getting into. And that is a part of what, that is a part of the permissible ghiba, as the ulama sometimes call it. Imam Noah, we spoke extensive about, extensively about it in his book, Riyadh the Salihin. And if you want details, go refer back to Riyadh the Salihin. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.